Bangkok. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about, as usual, we always start our class with pranayama. Pranayama is really important to me. I think breath work is, 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 is pivotal or paramount in order for us to, to live a healthy lifestyle. And the pranayama that I wanted to refer to today was the pranayama of energy flow. So it's so interesting. I've just been reading up and I study a lot in my own life about, you know, where we can harness energy flow better. And it's very interesting because, you know, especially in the situation we're in right now, we recognize and realize that absolutely nothing is permanent. You know, even if we feel really secure and even if we feel like we're really in control of things, you know, we just, especially with a situation like this, we recognize that we really actually have no control. Um, and the only way that we can get energy to flow is by actually letting go, by actually not trying to control situations and by not trying to, 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 to hold on too much. Um, purely by letting go, and even in our practice, you know, if we're really getting fixated on getting a particular, or getting into a particular posture, and the posture's just not happening, and the posture's just not happening, maybe a better approach would be to say, you know what, every day I do a little bit, and that little bit that I do every day will eventually get me to the posture, but the posture is not the aim. It's, it's the experience of being in the moment and accepting what is for you right now. So it's not necessarily the frustration of what we think we, or where we think we need to be, or what we think we need to be doing, but it's the acceptance of just stepping into your body in that moment and, and really just unifying mind and body. Um, I just wanna share this with you a little bit before we breathe. And it says here, breathing, this is a great book. This is Finding the Still Point, A Beginner's Guide to Zen Meditation by John Dado Lurie. This is the book I started meditating with. And it says, breath is life. The word spirit means breath. The word ki in Japanese and chi in Chinese means power or energy. Both derive from breath. Breath is the key to zazen. It is the vital force in our bodies. In zazen, you will discover how breathing and posture are closely allied to your emotions. Notice how when your mind is agitated, your breath is agitated. Discover how anger, for instance, affects the depth and rate of your breathing. Check your body to see where your muscles are tense. Notice if your posture is unbalanced, your jaw clenched or shoulders hunched. When your mind is at rest, breathing is deep and easy, without effort. So, the breath exercise that we're going to do today is a circular breath. We've done this before. This works specifically with the energy channels in the body. Um, thinking of all the neurological connections that you have through your spine. I've been working with this breath technique for the past week, week and a half. Um, our energy goes where our attention flows. So even if you don't do the little cycle in your body with the breath, then just consciously take your mind to the area where I direct the breath into. So I'm just going to show you quickly, then we're going to close our eyes. The way we do the breath is it's a circular breath. You start the breath in the pelvic floor, you cycle the breath into your lower back, you inhale into your middle back, upper back, back of the head, front of the face, front of the throat, the chest, the belly, you push the belly out when you inhale, and then to exhale, you contract the lower abdominals, you contract the pelvic floor, you contract the lower back, the upper back, the front of the body, the abdomen. So we just cycle that breath. So you can either do that circular movement through your spine, which already releases neural connections and brings more mobility into the spine, thinking of guiding the breath into those areas, or you can just take your attention to that area. So you can just sit still in your meditative position, and just as I cue it, you just take your attention to the area that I'm referring to, and you imagine that your breath can flow into that area. I know we don't have lungs in our pelvic floor, but the muscles expand, our whole body expands. We don't realize it, but when we breathe, our whole body expands. So your pelvic floor expands, your entire body actually breathes with you, um, even though you're not aware of it. So close your eyes, place your hands gently on your lap. Make sure you can sit with an erect spine and make sure your lower back is relaxed. So just take a moment to bring yourself into your seat. Take a moment to become aware of your surroundings. 
being aware of the noises around you. Being aware of the sounds inside your own body. And become mindful of the cool air flowing in through your nostrils. mindful of the escape of warmer air as you exhale. And just noticing the breath. And then see if you can use your inhalation to guide the breath into your belly. So feeling your belly actively expanding, pressing the belly away from your spine. So really pushing it out, trying to form a balloon with the belly. And then as you exhale, gently release, just feel the belly button naturally fall back towards the spine. And do this again, taking that nice deep inhalation into the belly. Feeling the belly expand. This time maybe breathing into the pelvis as well. Feeling the pelvic floor expand. And see if you can slow down your exhalation. Not being eager or in a hurry to let the breath go, but just gently, slowly letting the air release through the nostrils or over the lips. And then do one more breath like this, drawing the breath deep into the belly. See if you can even expand the breath into the lower back now. And as you exhale, Gently find that release. And just feel your body relax and release with every breath. So as you inhale, feel deep relaxation coming into your body. And as you exhale, just gently feel the body relax and release. Maybe noticing tension that you carry in your body, maybe in your shoulders, maybe in your jaw. And just seeing if you can use your breath to shift this energy. And we start directing our breath now, starting our inhalation with relaxing the pelvic floor, drawing breathe or drawing the breath deep into the pelvis. And then we draw the breath into the lower back, maybe just rounding the lower back out slightly. Keep inhaling into the middle back, the upper back, the back of the neck the front of the face, the front of the throat, the chest, and then the abdomen presses out like that balloon. And then we lead the exhalation out of the lower abdomen, the pelvic floor, the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the back of the neck, the back of the head, the front of the face, the chest, and then finally the upper abdomen contracts. And then we inhale again from the pelvic floor, the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the back of the neck, the back of the head, the front of the face, the chest, the belly presses up actively away from the spine. We exhale, we draw in the lower abdomen, the pelvic floor, the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the back of the neck, the back of the head, the front of the face, the chest, the upper abdomen. And we just keep cycling the breath through the body like this, just inhaling all the way from the pelvic floor up the back of the body, all the way in the front of the body, and then we exhale all the way up the back of the body, all the way down the front of the body. Just keep this rhythmic breath going, seeing if you can slow it down, seeing if you can be mindful with your thoughts, really directing the energy to the area that you are breathing into. Not being in a hurry to complete your cycles, but really just finding the space and the time to allow yourself to breathe.
Just doing one more cycle of breath like this and then just bring yourself to calm, natural breath. Just maybe noticing now how the body feels a bit more relaxed and released. Mm -hmm. And then just knowing that in today's practice you need to work at a level that is appropriate for you. I can't see what is going on in your body today. You need to be conscious and aware to take the postures only a, as deep as what is good for your body. Listening to the cues, just finding an adjustment if you need to. If something hurts in a joint, then maybe just come out of the posture a little bit or maybe just know when to take child pose when you need to take child pose. Gently rub your thumb over your fingertips and you can just open your eyes. Just refocusing if you're sitting on a cushion or if you're sitting on some blocks, maybe just shift them out of the way. Bring yourself either into a cross-legged seating position or if you're comfortable to sit on your knees like this, then just sit on your knees like this. And then we're just going to start rounding through the spine. So I want you to use your hands, to press your hands into your knees to pull the spine backwards. So I'm drawing the tailbone under, I'm connecting my abdominals, I'm pulling back on my thighs. If you're sitting cross-legged, you're doing exactly the same thing. If you're sitting cross-legged, it doesn't need to be a tight cross, it can be a loosest cross. But then you pull the elbows outwards, you pull back, tilting the tailbone forwards and upwards and then we lift up we expand but I want you to be conscious here that the top of the hips do not move forward so I want you to still draw the pubic bone forward I want you to still draw the tailbone forward then push the belly forward the chest forward the throat forward so the extension is in our upper back with our lower back staying long and then do that again round out through the spine this is not a collapse I'm in an active stance I'm pulling into my knees and then bring myself into a full posture. Again, don't move the top of the hips forward. Keep the top of the hips back. I push the belly, chest, and throat forward so that I can find that opening across the chest, across the upper back. And then I round out again, seeing if I can draw the pubic bone or the tailbone even further forward. Maybe here, if you're uncrossed or if you're sitting on your knees, bring your legs to in front of you and we deepen this even more, holding on behind the knees this time. So we send the elbows out to the side. We pull ourselves into this position. I'm pressing down through my armpits to release my neck. Then I keep the top of the hips back. I press the belly forward, the chest forward, the throat forward. And if you feel okay, you can look up. But be very mindful here that you're not overarching into the lumbar spine. And then one more time, take it into that round back position. This time maybe roll through the shoulders a little bit, just find a little bit of activation through the shoulders and then draw a gentle figure eight with your nose. So just gently like a lazy eight, a sideways eight, just releasing through the neck. Gently pressing back through the, by bringing the chin towards the throat, lengthening the back of the neck and then bring yourself into a child pose on your mat. So for those of you that are working to music, if you're using my playlist, you can start my playlist now, but start it on the second song, not on the first song. I was going to use the first song for our, um, for our uh, meditation, but I decided not to. So just start yourself on the second song. So just in your child pose, again, getting the sensation that the tailbone is drawing under. Yeah, I want you to press the armpits down towards the floor. Lengthen your lower back, keep your toes tucked here. If you have knee problems, you can bring your hips to over your knees, but still then draw the tailbone downwards and forwards and stretch out through the shoulders. From wherever you are, start drawing your tailbone forward, start rolling up one vertebra at a time. Bring yourself to a four point base. I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see me and then sit yourself back into your child pose and just do a few rolls here so we are activating through a bit of a cat and a cow here and you can see I'm involving my shoulders so I'm actually rolling through my shoulders as well so I press away from the mat and then I roll through my shoulders dip into them 
So just finding as much movement through your spine as you can, making this feel really good, maybe even stretching sideways if you feel like you need a bit of a sideways stretch to start with today. And being mindful of your lower back. Some of us are so stuck in our lower backs, we don't move through the lower back at all, and we just create a big flexion through the middle back. So see if you can get that lower back online by drawing the pivot bone forward. And then bring yourself to your four-point base. Become aware of your hands. Grip with your palms. Spread your fingers. Grip with your fingertips. Then tuck your toes and press yourself to a very easy downward facing dog. Just walking out one leg, then walking out the other leg. Here, yeah, become mindful. The action of your hands is this. You're trying to twist the heel of the hand inwards, but you're not actually moving it. So we're just activating the muscles under the armpit again. So the armpits are pressing back towards the hips. Just walking out your dog. And then bring yourself into a very easy forward fold. So placing the feet in line with the wrists, holding onto opposite elbows, and then releasing the crown of your skull towards the mat. So my chest is resting on my thighs here. That's really important, especially for those of you with very tight hamstrings. Don't overstrain the back line of the body. We just want to stretch through the spine here. There's loads of benefits with the blood flowing into your head here. So just gently release here. You can maybe shake your head yes, and then gently shake your head no. Just find that belly breath. So breathe naturally. Don't think of forcing your breath. Just a nice, natural, calm breath. And then we're going to push the belly out as we start lifting up. Just protect your spine. And you bring yourself all the way to a standing position. Bring the back of your hands together. So I'm lengthening through my lower back here. I want you to soften your knees slightly and then find that spinal roll again. So just moving through the hips. I'm lengthening my lower back. I'm imagining that my sit bones are really heavy. The back of my hands are together. And then I start restacking my spine. So I use my thumbs to lift one vertebra at a time. I create length, but my lower back stays long. So as I lift, I don't go into an extension. I keep that nice traction state. So I reach up with my fingertips and then find that gentle shoulder roll. So I'm rolling, pressing the armpits forwards as I roll. And then again, you might feel your neck a little bit here. So once you've lifted as high as you can, you're sinking down as far as you can through your sit bones. I want you to just find that infinity curve with your nose. I know this might feel a bit bizarre for some of you, but if you can let go and just let the head move freely on the spine, you actually release a lot of tension. And then press the hands forward and down, past the hips, turn the shoulders in. So here I'm lengthening through my wrists, and again we find that little circle through the shoulders. Just lifting the shoulders up, Finding this nice stretch, so my fingertips are pointing towards the ceiling. So in sideways, as you can see, my lower back is still long. And then I restack the spine. So I lift one vertebra at a time, and I open up and I lengthen through my fingertips. So now I'm pressing the wall away. I'm pressing my palms into the wall. My lower back is still long. You can maybe even do a spinal roll again to just release your lower back. And then bring your hands towards your collarbones. We send the hands upwards. This time we're going to look up. So the length, there's still length in your lower back. I lift, I lift the belly, the chest, the throat. I look up. So I'm actually pushing my belly out a little bit here as well. And then bring the hands back down towards your chest. We do that one more time, but this time we add a little bit of a squat. We turn the shoulders in. You're going to turn your feet, I'd say just a little bit out, not a lot. And then get the sensations that the heels are squeezing inwards, so the thighs switch on. Rise your heels, still squeeze your heels inwards, press your knees outwards. You only take it down as far as what is comfortable for you. If there's any pain in your knees here, then you resist going down too far. We roll up, opening up one vertebra at a time, staying in that deep squat. If you are in the squat, if you're with straight legs, that's okay, but keep the knees soft and keep the lower back long. 
we bring the hands back in. We rise up, we straighten out the legs, we look towards the hands. If you don't feel okay with balance, then just look forward here. Yeah. Slowly press down through the heels, bring the hands towards the front of the body. We start rolling up one vertebra at a time. Lift the shoulders. The more you can lift the shoulders, the more you lengthen and traction the spine. The more we can reach that tailbone forward, find that release. We bring the hands forward and down. We lift on the one side of the body. I want you to think of, I'm trying to find a good analogy here. Think of opening from the base of the spine. So you're opening from the belly button. You're opening from the ribs, then from the shoulder. And yeah, it's not opening the shoulder backwards, it's the sideways movement and the lateral flexion without collapsing. And then we reach, press that top armpit forward, just reaching. And again, yeah, just go into a little shoulder rotation. Relax your neck here. So make sure that your neck is nice and released. And then I move from the core as I restack the other side of the spine to join up. And I take my hands forward and down. And then I lift through the other side, one vertebra at a time, finding that beautiful opening on the sideline of the body. And I reach, pressing that armpit forward. And then I bring the other arm around. I restack and I take my hands forward and down. I rotate. It doesn't matter what side you go to, we're doing both sides. And again, yeah, my hips are facing forward, and you can see I just use this little spinal release to lengthen through the lower back. We carry so much tension through the lower back. And then we reach the back arm through and under. We open up, we rotate towards the other side. It's like I'm pressing the air away. My back fingertips are facing down, the front fingertips are facing up and then I reach that back arm under and through. You can bring your feet a little bit closer towards each other. We will go into our balancing postures. So you're more than welcome with the balance work to always keep one leg on the floor. So we bring the one leg forward, we bring the back of the hands together, we stack the spine. We reach forward and down. We turn the shoulders in, and then if you feel okay, we lift that leg. You do not have to lift the leg. If the leg is lifted, see if you can draw it all the way into your chest. I'm not gripping the knee, but if you can draw the leg all the way naturally into the chest, then see if you can push your hands into the shin and then push the shin into your hands. And then release. We open up, so we turn the shoulders up. Turn that front thigh inwards. So the leg that's straight towards the front is turning inwards, and if you feel okay, you lift it. My standing leg can be slightly bent, so it can help you with your balance, and it also helps to just look at a single point. And then bring that leg back down, send that same leg out to the side, we now open. Remember, it's a sequential opening through the sideline of the body. Again, you're welcome to stay here. If you feel okay, you lift the leg. And you really try and squeeze it in as tightly to the side as you can. We take the leg down, we straighten it out, bring the arms forward now, so I'm in a slightly round back position. If you feel okay, the leg lifts. So I'm in a side bend. And we bring the leg back in. Beautiful. We go to the other side. So. Again, we bring the back of the hands together, we reset the spine. We reach forward and down, the other leg comes forward, now we turn the shoulders in. And if you feel like you have your balance, we lift the leg. Squeezing it up tightly into the chest. We take that leg down, straighten it out, open up through the collarbones, press away through the heels of the hands. The lower back's still long, I'm not creating tension in the lower back. And then bring the leg back in. We take that leg out to the side, we lift, we're creating lots of space. This feels so good in the sideline of the body to me. And then if you feel okay, you lift up. And remember, I'm not holding, I'm using the muscles of the body to naturally stay there. We take it back down, the leg straightens out. I bring myself towards the front, I'm lengthening through the wrists. 
you stay here or if you feel okay, lift. Bending the leg, bringing it back down. We lengthen. So we restack. We press forward and down. Turn the shoulders in. And then we lengthen again. Pick up the one leg. Lengthen your lower back. And step that leg backwards. And then reach up through the arm. So I've got a long lower back. So I'm drawing my tailbone forward. And then if you feel okay, you pick up the leg. I'm not touching, I've just reached the hand back, I'm not creating tension in the lumbar spine yet, and then take that back, bring the arms forward again, I'm going to press through the hands to help me pick up, so now I turn that back thigh inwards, so the back thigh turns in, and I press, you're welcome to keep the foot on the floor, you lift, if you're lifted, a lot of us have a tendency to collapse the chest, so I want you to open your chest, but keep that hip of the lifted leg parallel to the floor. And then we bring it through. Now what you're going to do for me is you're going to find your balance. Welcome to put your foot down if you need to, otherwise we rise onto the toes of the standing leg and base the heel back down. We go to the other side, back of the hands together, we lift up. We use the press of the hands to create length in the lower back as we step that leg back and then again reset, reach up. If you feel okay, you bring the heel towards the sit bones. And you're really trying to squeeze the heel inwards. Not holding, just reaching. And then bring the leg down, bring that arm back up. We lengthen the lower back, we turn that back thigh inwards. And then I press with the hands to lift, keeping that hip parallel to the floor, conscious that I'm opening across the collarbones. I bring the leg forward. You're welcome to keep the foot on the floor, or if you feel okay, we rise onto the toes of the other leg, and we release. Beautiful. Bring the back of the hands together. Roll up one vertebra at a time. Take yourself forward and down. We rotate. The side we're rotating to is the leg that comes forward. And you just base your hands gently on the thigh. The back arm reaches up. We lift. You either stay here, or you're welcome to have the foot on the floor. And then we straighten out. We open up. And we lift. Bring the back arm through and under. Basing the leg back down, we go towards the other side. Bring the hand down towards the thigh, reaching up through the arm. And you're more than welcome to keep the foot down, or you lift. When we straighten out, we open up. You either stay with the foot on the floor, or you lift. Actively starting to release through the musculature of the body. We take ourselves forward and down, forward fold over your legs. Legs deeply bent, so if your spine is offloaded. Rise onto your fingertips, and then plant your hands. Pick up your right foot, squeeze the heel into your sit bones, push into your hands, and then lean slightly forward into your fingertips. Remember your hands are gripping like you're wanting to make a twist with them, but the palm's rooted. Step that right leg back, hover it for just a second. Don't open the hip of the leg that's back, and then base the foot. Slide your fingertips back so that they're in line with the front foot. My front knee is directly over my front ankle. I'm pushing into my fingertips, and I'm imagining that I can push my feet apart here. I want to split my mat apart. Breathe or press your belly forward and lift. So we are in a high lunge. I'm just going to turn sideways so that you can see. And we're just going to cycle through a few lifts and lows. Beautiful. We're going to lower the back knee down now. So if you've got your towel handy, maybe place it under your back knee if you know your knees don't like being um, in this position. 
And I just want to show you my hip is directly over my knee. I'm not in a forward leaning position. I'm going to again tuck my tailbone under. I lift the side of the leg that's at the back. And I reach through my fingertips. So again, we find that side lengthening. I'm opening through this hip. The more you draw your tailbone under your pubic bone forward, the more you'll feel the stretch in this hip. I join with the other side. Place your hands back down. Strong press as you lift the back leg. Push into your hands. Extend the other leg backwards. So I'm in a full plank. In your full plank, you are lifting between the shoulder blades. You're squeezing the heels of the hands inward. Then base your knees. Still have that architecture of drawing the tailbone under. Imagine you can pull back with the heels of your hands and start lowering down slowly, slowly, slowly. Bring yourself all the way down. Base your elbows, make a fist with your hands. Press down through your toes, press down through your pubic bone. Pull back with the armpits. So as you pull back with the armpits, you'll lift. You'll feel your upper back activating. Try and maintain that height and then reach your arms back next to you. Base your hands, tuck your toes, lift your lower back first. Take yourself to child pose, take yourself to down dog. Breathe into your bed. In your down dog, grip with your fingers. Imagine that you can push your hands and your feet in opposite directions. Turn the heels of the hands inward and then lift your lower ribs. Spread your shoulder blades wide apart. So as you lift your ribs, your shoulder blades should automatically move away from each other. And then press your armpits towards your hips. Look towards your navel. So you'll feel your core activate. And then start walking your feet forward towards your hands. Forward fold over your legs. Hold onto opposite elbows. Just releasing the crown of the skull. Releasing the shoulders. And then gently press the armpits towards the hips. And then start lifting by pressing the belly out. Bring yourself all the way to a standing posture. Bring the back of the hands together. Roll up, look towards the hands. And then bring hands towards heart center as you take yourself forward and down. Moving the navel, the ribs, the chest. Rise onto your fingertips. Plant your hands firmly. This is a bit of a back extension, so be conscious here. My pubic bone is drawing forward, but my upper back is lifting when I rise into my fingertips. So it's a flat back stance. And then I base my hands back down. This time the other leg squeezes into your chest. The heel squeezes towards your sit bone. Push into your hands and then shift yourself forward a little bit so that you bring your weight into your arms. And then extend that leg backwards. Hover it. Keep the hip level to the floor. Base it down. Strong press into your hands, step the other leg back, and then we travel forward. You have the option to base your knees, otherwise we lower all the way down through Chaturanga, making sure the chest and the hips touch at the same time. Again, we start with the elbows forward, we pull the armpits back, press down through your toes and your pubic bone, breathe into your belly, and we release. This time we interlace the fingers behind the back. We start imagining that we can grow taller from the crown of the skull as we lift. And see if you can lift your hands away from your sit bone. Conscious here that you're not creating tension in the lower back. So press down through your feet. Breathe into your belly. And then base your hands next to your chest. Tuck your toes. This time see if you can press straight back up towards your plank. So my pubic bone presses forward and I push all the way up. If that's not possible for you. You lift your lower back, you go to your child pose, and then you go to your down dog. Breathe into your belly. We walk the feet forward, or you float the feet forward. If you float, a little micro bend in the knees, and then just find a little float forward, landing very lightly. Rise onto your fingertips, and then see if you can forward fold just a little bit deeper. Press the hands forward on your mat to see if you can join your chest into your thighs. Reach your hands back behind the heels so that you almost look like a skier. And then press your belly forward as you lift yourself all the way towards Utkatasana. 
So in my Utkatasana, I'm not going to send the sit bones back so far. I want you to think more of the compression of the legs together. Take the heels out slightly. So the heels are pressed out slightly. And then I'm turning the pinkies towards the back of the room. So your core should feel active here. Your legs should feel active. And you should feel some activation in your back, but not excessive strain in your lower back. This is an upper back extension. So draw your lower ribs down and then lift the chest. See if you can sit it just a little bit deeper without causing strain. And then take yourself forward and down. Breathe into your belly, press your belly forward. Bring yourself up, bring the back of the hands together. Take the feet slightly wider apart. Careful now as you stand up. Bring yourself all the way up. Look towards your hands. Bring your hands towards heart center. And just take a moment to ground your feet. So finding a deep center of rooting through the feet. Bring the back of the hands together. Roll up one vertebra at a time. Send one leg out to the side. You rotate towards that side. We reach behind the leg and then we use the opening of the shoulders to open that hip to step back that leg. So at this point, the center of my back foot is in line with the heel of my front foot. My back foot is pointing diagonally forward. My front foot is pointing straight forward. So we just find that warrior one position. Turn the back hip forward. So you're squaring off your hips. If it's too much for you with your back leg um, or back heel on the floor, you can lift your back heel upwards. That's also okay. I lift one vertebra at a time. So I find that extension. And then I reach forward. I'm going to turn sideways so that you can see what I'm doing. So I find that deep reach. And then I open up. Be conscious here as you open up that the front thigh is still spinning outwards. So squeeze the front heel inwards. Palms are up. And then I rest my back ear towards the back shoulder, looking over the front hand. And you can see if you can take yourself a little bit deeper. If your warrior two is a little bit short, you can slide the front leg out slightly. Being mindful here that we're still drawing the tailbone under, that the core is still active, pressing into the outside of the back foot, pressing into the big toe of the front foot, spinning that front thigh out even more, spinning the back thigh in. Sink it a little bit deeper if you can. Bring your hand onto the back thigh, lengthening through the front of the body. Just finding a lot of opening through the side of the body, activation. And then we're going to lean forward, base this um, forearm on the thigh, and then reach the arm forward and up. Finding that opening. Vajvakamasana. Finding a strong activation here. So I want you to pick up your arm that's on your leg, and then reach it, and see if you can rotate the belly button towards the ceiling and then place it back down. So for some of you, this is deep enough. My front thigh is still spinning out. Be mindful of that. For some of you, it's going to feel okay to take your fingertips to the floor. I do not want you to put a flat hand on the floor. I just want the fingertips on the floor so that you stay activated through the side of the body. Breathe into your belly. If you feel okay, you can look towards the hand. If that causes too much strain in your neck, you look towards your foot. Breathe into your belly. Bring that hand down towards the mat. Pick up the back heel. Strong press into your hand. Extend the foot back. Take yourself to a downward facing dog. We're going to do a rolling vinyasa. So you ride your heels. You roll forward one vertebra at a time. You base your knees. This time we bring ourselves into a little kneeling position. We bring the back of the hands together, we restack the spine. We reach the hands forward and down, turn the shoulders in, restack, turn the shoulders out, bring the hands towards the collarbones. We lengthen as we reach. The other side joins. The other side lengthens as we reach. We keep moving through the spine finding as much mobility as we can, reaching the back arm and then through, just making it feel really good in your body. 
reaching that back arm through, bring the back of the hands together, restack the spine one vertebra at a time, base your hands, press into your downward facing dog. All your little um, pointers of the ribs lifting, the armpits pressing towards the hip, the fingers gripping, active. The legs bend slightly, not that important in a down dog to have straight legs, more important to lengthen through the lower back. Some of us think that means extending the lower back, it doesn't. It means drawing the tailbone down, the sit bones down. You either walk forward or you take a little float forward. A float lands lightly and we rise up by pushing the belly forward and bring the back of the hands together. We go to the other side. So we take the leg out, we reach behind, you use the opening to step back the leg. Be careful here not to step the leg behind the other leg, so you're not crossed over. Rather think either the heel's in alignment or the center of the foot in alignment with the other heel. And then I turn that hip forward. I always use my hands to do this so that I actually have a gauge for what that hip is doing. I lean into the front leg, the back of the hands come together, I lift one vertebra at a time without my ribs flaring, but I press the belly forward, the chest forward, the throat forward, turn the pinkies towards the back of the room, and then reach forward. Again, I'm going to turn so that you can see what I'm doing. I open up. That front leg doesn't suddenly tilt in as you open up. You're rotating from the core, opening up. And again, the back ear relaxes towards the back shoulder. Finding that beautiful open warrior two. Seeing if I can sink a little bit deeper into that front leg. Breathing into your belly. Reaching through the fingertips, but making sure that you can move them. Maybe just finding a little bit of movement. So thinking of that circular breath that we had and seeing how it feels to just actually move your body in this posture, sink a little bit deeper into the thigh. Reach the back hand towards the back thigh, reach back, lengthen through the side of the body. Conscious that you're not leaning on the back leg, but simply just touching, and then bring that back front arm towards the thigh, lifting up. I turn my front heel out slightly normally, just ever so slightly so that my front, the outside of my front foot's parallel to the mat and then I squeeze the heel inwards and that helps me rotate this thigh out. And again, yeah, we're not relying on this arm. We can lift it. We turn, we rotate from the waist. And then for those of you that feel like you can take it a little bit deeper actively, you just base the fingertips, not the whole hand because then you stop activating through the musculature. I press my feet apart. If you feel okay, you look up at the hand. Rotating, base that hand, lift the back heel, strong press as you step that foot back. So we're gonna do a full chaturanga now. You have the option to base your knees down. We press away, we travel forward. We hold halfway and then we start reaching forward and up. You can see I haven't dumped my hips down. I'm actually lifting through my hips so that the opening is through the upper back at this point. If that's too much for you, then you go down towards the floor and you go to your little fist back. I don't know if you can still see me in there. I think you can. And then tuck, take yourself back towards a child pose. And your child pose, just again, draw the sit bones downward, draw the tailbone forward so that you can lengthen, release and relax. You can maybe even here yeah, bring your arms next to your body, let your forehead rest on your mat, breathe into your belly. And then come forward, base your hands, press through your shoulders, take yourself towards a down dog. We're going to bring the feet forward next to the hands. So the way we're going to do that is, this is actually a little bit of a Buddha transition that I really enjoy. So bring your feet closer to each other. 
without flinging the hip open, pick up your right leg. So the hip stays parallel to the floor. Squeeze the right heel towards the right sit bone. Travel forward. Bring your knee towards the outside of the shoulder. Hover your foot outside the hand. And then base it down. Press into your hands. We're going to take that leg back to your three-legged down dog. Push through the ball of the foot. Base that foot back down. Make sure your armpits are pressing towards your hips. The other leg lifts up. And I lift it up mindfully. Squeeze the heel towards your sit bone. Elevate your right heel. Roll forward. Bring the knee to the outside of the shoulder. Hover the foot outside the hand and place it. And then we bring the other leg to join it. So I'm in quite a wide um, stance. My feet are to the outsides of my mat. And then I'm going to walk my fingertips forward. Lengthen. It's like you're hanging off your fingertips. You're reaching back through your sit bones, drawing your tailbone under. And then reaching forward through your fingertips. Again here you can draw your armpits down slightly. And then start bringing yourself up, pressing the belly out, lifting the navel, the ribs, the chest. Finding this wide squat position. You might have to take your feet a little bit wider. Finding this tucked under position. So drawing the the sit bones heavily down, being mindful here that the heels are squeezing in. This is one of my favorite postures. We interlace the fingers, we lift. So we open up. And then we press the belly forward, the chest forward. We tuck ourselves through our legs and we reach. And then we bring ourselves back up. We take the, release the hands, turn the shoulders in. Turn the shoulders out, interlace your fingers behind your back. Such a nice stretch into the shoulders. But again, be mindful that you're not causing strain in your lower back. So my tailbone is tucking under when I take myself forward. And then bring yourself back up by pushing the belly out. I can't stress that enough. That releases your back. Bring yourself back to this position. We're going to reach the hands forward and then we roll from the belly, the chest, the shoulder, and we bring that back. We take it the other way, the belly, the chest, the shoulder, and you can see how I'm moving my hands. It's almost like the hand is the last thing to open. There's a reason for that. And then the hand comes back first. Sink a little bit deeper into your squat if you can. And we bring that back. And then we take ourselves down towards the floor. Now you're going to turn the heels outwards slightly. You walk your hands back between your legs. So you might have to widen your legs slightly. Even though the heels are turned out, the action is that of squeezing the heels inwards. And I push forward with my hands to see if I can pull my elbows back. For those of you with very tight hamstrings, please do bend your legs. Don't torture yourself. A stretch should never feel invasive. You should feel like you can naturally go there because all a stretch is, an, it's an activation of the musculature of the opposite side. So in order to stretch my hamstrings, I have to activate my quadriceps. Bring yourself back. Heel toe your feet closer. Press into your hands. Travel forward into your hands. Pick up your right foot. Step it back, pick up your left foot, step it back. We go through a full vinyasa. So you have the option to base your knees down to go to that fighting cobra. Or we travel forward. We hold it halfway. And we reach forward and up. And you can see I haven't dipped my hips down further. I push. So I'm going to stand my toes here for this one. Squeeze your shoulder blades backwards. And then take yourself back towards your down dog or your child pose. And then your down dog. Always being mindful to lift your lower back first. We're going to walk the feet forward. So widen your hands slightly. Turn your fingers out slightly. Grip with your fingertips. Start walking forward with your feet. So this is a posture that is really important that is overlooked sometimes. This is working towards Lulasana or Tolasana. So you push into your hands and then you sit down. So we had lots of activation through the arms, through the core there. Once you're seated, we bring ourselves into a navasana with the hands rooted. So the hands are behind me. I bring the legs up 
and then lower down onto the elbows, extend the legs, and we do little circles with the legs and the arms. So you just find that beautiful activation, circling legs, circling arms. You should feel your core activate here. Now start circling the feet on the legs, the hands on the wrists. So starting to create more mobility. If you're doing this correctly, you really should feel a strong core activation. And then we release. We base our hand, we bring the legs forward. Push down through your heels. We use the spinal movements to shift ourselves over our legs. At this moment, my legs are still bent. We're all going to start with bent legs. I want you to be mindful here that you can create a tall spine, but not an arched lower back. So again, I reach my sit bones down. I send the top of the hips backwards slightly. Then I lift. So I find the lift. You can use your hands behind you if you need to. And then I'm going to draw my hands up my spine, cycle forward. So it's like I'm doing a forward fold from the belly and then from the ribs and then from the chest. So your objective is to get your chest or your chest onto your thighs. If your legs have to be bent for that, then your legs are bent for that. For those of you that are more flexible that do not feel like this is an excruciating posture and, and also where the shoulders aren't excessively rounded because some of us round very excessively over the shoulder, you can start sliding forward and see if you can maintain this posture. Otherwise, you just remain here. There's nothing wrong with this. If you are in this posture, we pull in with the hands so that we can get the sensation that the armpits are also moving down towards the hips. And if you can see, I don't have to pull on my feet to get here. Then you can hold on to the heel. But again, then push the heels into the hands, pull back with the elbows. Breathe into your belly. Just being in a place that's safe for your body. You can maybe see if you are in a bent leg posture, you may be gaining a little bit of flexibility as you go, but don't force it. It really helps to push down through the heels and then think of activating the quadriceps. Start walking the hands back up, bring the legs up, base your feet. Base your hands behind you. I'll actually stay sideways. It'll be easy for you to see. My fingertips are pointing forward. Nick, if you're on there, please be mindful for your shoulders. Rather just maybe go into a half lift for now. Don't go into a full lift. So I'm going to push forward with my hands. I push down through my feet. And then I lift my hips. At this point, I make a point of dropping the top of the hips backwards. Lifting the pubic bone, and then I lift the belly, the chest. I feel here as if I can squeeze my heels inwards slightly. And then if you feel okay, you press the throat forward and you tilt your head back. It's not just simply letting your head fling back, conscious of good activation. Otherwise, just to stay with your chin towards your throat. And then slowly bring yourself back down. Again, taking yourself to that position where we can just circle through the legs, the ankles, the forearms, the hands. And bring yourself forward, being mindful for knees in the next posture. So we're going to place the arm under the knee. You squeeze the leg into the arm, you pull the arm up, upwards. And then if you feel okay, you bring the foot into the thigh and you lower the leg down. If this doesn't feel good in your knee, then you just straighten the leg out to the side. So it depends on where you're at. Again, this front leg can be slightly bent. I push down through the heel. So even if the leg is straight, I still push down through the heel. We rotate towards the front leg. I draw my hands up the sides of my body and I use the spinal movement to lean forward, then I base the hand on the outside of the straight leg and I push forward with it and I reach with the opposite arm. 
pressing that armpit downwards slightly on the hand that's reaching forward. Really push into the hand, push forward into the hand that's next to uh, the straight leg or the slightly bent leg because it'll help you bring the hip backwards and it'll help you really stretch into the side of the body. Relax the chin towards your throat. The objective here is again to bring the chest towards the thigh, but if the thigh needs to be bent for that, that's absolutely fine. You'll still get the benefit of the posture. We release, we bring ourselves back up. This leg that's out to the side, see how we're doing for time, you know what, we're actually gonna go to the other side. So bring that leg back up. We bring both legs in, extend the other leg, squeeze that leg over the arm. And then I try and get it in naturally without using my hand. So I try and get the foot naturally into the inner thigh. But if you have to use your hand, you can. Um, and then if the knee is sore, you straighten out the leg. And then we again find that spinal activation to push the hand forward next to the knee of the straight or the slightly bent leg. And I reach through the opposite side. Breathing into the belly. And you can even see if you can bring that gentle shoulder roll in here. Pressing the straight arm armpit down slightly. Remember, push down through the heel of that front leg. Bring yourself back up. Base that foot. Reach forward with your hands. Um, yeah, you can see all of me, and we're going to roll back. If that doesn't feel good for those of you with disc pathology, just use turn onto your side, bring yourself down to a supine position. Ideally, you want to be able to brush your heels with your fingertips, but if that doesn't feel good in your knees, then you can slide your feet a little bit further forward. Turn the heels out ever so slightly, and then squeeze them inwards. We lift the hips, the lower back, the middle back. I drop the top of the hips, I lift the pubic bone, then I lift the belly, the chest, the throat. And if you feel okay, you walk the shoulders in under the body. If that doesn't feel nice for your body, then you just stay with your arms next to your body. But get the sensation of the shoulders drawing towards each other. Being mindful here that you're not creating tension in the lower back, but rather thinking of an extension across the entire spine. My teacher said something so fabulous. Um, if you get a little bit of extension across all the vertebrae, you get good back extension. But if you focus all the extension into one part of the spine, you're doing more damage than good. And then bring yourself down one vertebrae at a time. Bring your knees to the outside, or just bring your knees into your chest. Press your hands into your shins, your shins into your hands. Press the back of the head, the top of your hips down towards the mat. And then draw your chin towards your throat. Lift up. Bring yourself into a little half sit-up position. Reach your hands forward. Activate your core. And bring yourself back. Again, the back of the head, the top of the hips push in. We arch the back as we pull into the shins. Push the shin into the hands. And then chin towards your throat as you lift and find that little activation. Bring yourself back down. All the way, extend your arms to a T position, lower your knees over to the one side. And then bring your legs back towards the center, lower your knees to the other side. And bring your knees back towards the center. And then lift yourself up, hug all the muscles you have as tightly as you can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then relax down to your mat for Shavasana. In Shavasana, just legs comfortably apart. Arms next to your body, palms facing upwards. Also not touching your body. And then just release all control. Just feeling that free energy flow of loving information through your body.
you start deepening your breath. And rub your thumbs over your fingertips. And when you feel ready, draw your knees into your chest. to your side and just take a moment there to cradle your face in your hands. And press yourself up into an easy seated position. And bring your hands to heart center. your thumbs to brow. As we bow, we say Namaste. Thank you so much. So wonderful to practice with you all today. Um, I hope the practice was easy enough to follow along um, on Facebook Live and that the audio volume was good and that you enjoyed the playlist if you uh, managed to listen to the playlist. Um, please do give feedback. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. 